just doing the final touches. That's, uh... Okay, well, welcome to the sixth round of the Tuesday Night Marathon here at the Mechanics Institute Chess Club. Um, couple announcements before we begin. begin. There's the bathroom that says asbestos are inside. Um, they just put that there to scare you off. <laughs> the workers came and told us it's fine to use all tonight and they're going to do the final painting tomorrow morning and then we won't have any more problems with that. Um, also, we, we are going to have a chess camp in two weeks here, the 22nd to the uh, 26th that any, any of the players, you can just sign up for one day or two days or however many days you want then. Um, other notice, maybe you might check in your house or your garage if you have any you know, extra chess pieces lying around. Um, they just had an auction for this chess piece that somebody, they, they had bought one for $6. Um, that was back in 1965, just stored it in the garage. And um, now they had an auction, sold it for $929,000. <laughs> Oh, if you buy the whole set, you probably get a discount. But <laughs> <laughs> was this in England? Or was it, it was a missing piece from the Isle of Man. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Isle of Man or Isle of Lewis? I, Isle of oh, Lewis. Lewis. Oh, yes. well, 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 well. Yeah. And she had it for many years. She didn't hear it again. Yeah, it was something like it. Yeah. He died. His wife thought, that's pretty neat. I like it. And she kept it in a drawer for 35 years. Every now and then she'd take it out and think, well, look at that funny face. And then. Finally, she died, her, her uh, kids thought, this, is, this might be worth something, but the soft piece, they were right. <laughs> yeah, made of um, walrus yeah, ivory. Yeah. Yeah. Um. Okay, um, and today we're going to start with, there's various things going on in the chess world. There's the, um, you know, the summer tournaments everywhere and our tournaments. But uh, I'll show you a, a game between two strong players that asked by a request, um, and we'll quickly go through the opening, which started out a French defense, and a Tarash variation, the way Korchnoi used to play against this. Yeah. Both sides develop. We get a Typical French position, knights out, um, development, uh, pawn takes, pawn takes, attack the pawn, which needs to be defended, and um, try to push the knight away. It gets stopped, but then with the check, there's no really nice way to uh, defend against that. So he just moves the king to keep the pawn wedge in the center, and black tries to break up the, the center. Why, why couldn't he block with uh, bishop? Uh, bishop e2? You, you, you could have. You're, um, that, 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 that is possible. That's, you know, he, he wants to keep more pieces on for attacking. Uh, he's not so afraid of the king being here because you can, you can castle by hand. Well, but then if he plays bishop d2, if he captures bishop takes d2, the d pawn is weak. In, uh, or actually, or very, to... very good point. The tactically, you would have to actually capture with the, no. with the king. king. See, the knight, the knight takes, you lose this pawn, queen takes that. Thank you, Mike. That's a very concrete explanation. So he breaks up the center and um, develops to have a tempo. What a, so the queen moves, attacking this, and white plays very aggressively. Knight h4. Losing the center, but getting this check. 
uh, if pawn to g6, the knight takes it because of the pin. And um, in fact, the king moves. And anyway, the knight goes to g6, the pin on the rook. The um, black knight counters with an attack on the queen, but white retreats, just maintaining the, um, the pin on the rook. So principally, black counterattacks in the center, and rather than greedily going for an exchange, white captures to hold some squares in the center. So the rook moves in order not to get taken. White attacks on the, the queen here. Queen goes back. And now bishop checks. King comes up. Very complicated game here in the center. The knight attacked. But these pieces here. And suggestion for the white side. Winning the queen, yes, yes. Uh, anyone want to give up for the black side? It's no, that's you've lost your queen for two pieces. Knight takes, attacking that, takes, and, and steps away with. So you've got a. Uh, a queen, and all they have is two pieces and a pawn. And at this point, to tell you who, who the players are, white is a very strong player, which is stockfish. So you know everything's very precise. Calculated 10 moves ahead every move. No blunders, you know, no, no more than tiny errors. And so you would assume Stockfish ahead this, this queen just winning. Don't tell me black is alpha zero will win. Well, black is this program called Antifish. Oh, oh. oh okay. And Antifish is, um, it's a, a neural network which is actually designed to beat stockfish. <laughs> Trying to see what, you know, really, really subtle errors it could make. And, it, and it's played this variation, so it's, it's almost like you're in some alien kind of world. Usually you win a queen, you think you're winning the game. You know, it's, it's all really good. But this was not a blunder. This is intentional by the black. <laughs> side to get to this position. It's kind of like Gelfin playing the black side of the knight or L like who? Gelfin playing the black side of the knight or the queen goes away for two pieces and he has the initiative and he wins anyway. <laughs> okay, so maybe maybe it's not just the computers who can do that. <clears throat> they, you're right, there are some games where you um you give up your queen. And one thing about a queen is you know, they're, they're great on an open board where they can run everywhere. But if they don't have targets, like if everything's defended, a single queen isn't that powerful. You know, it's... So, so the question I have is normally when a situation like this happened, the queen, the defending queen, in this case white, the queen's far away from saving his bacon where the king is. So in this case, he's actually over where that is. And, and so it wouldn't seem that he has that same kind of... Uh, Setback, and, and but you know, so some there's has to be some way that anti fish has calculated not just so much uh, exact computation, but in principle, why the queen of bad because it's hard for it to move. Yet he has still to formulate a plan, right? Well, very interesting in your choice of words you use in principle, which those computers are morally bankrupt. They don't, <laughs> they don't have principles, you know. But okay, there. <laughs> You're great. Right. They have evaluations, and, and there are all those subtle points, as you say, going on. Uh, one of them is that you do con control the squares here. So when you look at it, you know, this black king is really safe, very hard for these 
white pieces to do anything to that. The other thing. You, you want to uh, make a comment about that? Well, I mean, so uh, Stockfish uh, had access to you know, millions of names and theory and all that, and it took that database to help it devise the best move from every situation. Now, there's a lot of calculation, et cetera, but, but they have access to that resource. Whereas the, the principle behind the neural networking learning is very different. The neural networking, you know, everybody knows about Alpha Zero, which is a neural, neural networking uh, approach. And you just you have the machine actually learn from its own history of millions and zillions of games. Uh, and yes, so playing them out. Experience based rather than, you know, sort of like this, this concept that human beings would have about, you know, activity of, of course these things are correlated, but activity of the pieces or, you know, um, even concepts as, uh, you know, development and all that may be out the window to some extent when you're just looking at experience and just know that it's okay to play H2, H4 on the first move. Okay. Well, hope, hope, hopefully we humans learn a bit from experience, too. Okay. Well, let's go on and but see. Back to, the game. back to yes, back to the game where you think if humans were playing that block would be very discouraged. And um, of course these things don't get discouraged. But um having all the fun. Well, that's true. If you're very careful that that queen can't do you much harm. Um, and Yes, he started pushing the knight around. The knight came back. Uh, probably queen h6 attacks the knight. Yeah, that's, if you give, like a, a human if would do one move like this, and suddenly there's targets for the queen. So the computer plays it just covers all the squares. And what's impressive is it just goes so slowly. White develops a rook, just develop the black rook, um, stops the pawns from rolling down, but just takes some squares. Um, and the game is really about even here. Uh, both, both computer evaluations have that that way. But you're right, it's, maybe black is having the fun because all these pieces can move and what do you hit on the black side? Um, and here he actually plays bishop to b5. Maybe he should try to exchange things. Um, I think there's, you know, it's, it's calculating 10 moves ahead, but somehow at this stage, it gets it a little wrong because black, every move black makes, makes the position a little safer. He got the rook out. Now he gets the king a little safer. Yeah, there, he does need to get that rook out, but not so easy. Bishop comes back. Um, uh, then the queen has to worry about the discovered check. 
if there's more pieces on the board, the queen has less room to maneuver. So, and then these next moves I like. What would you do? I, I don't know how many humans would make this move. King to a8, saying everything's covered, nothing too exciting, just make a tiny little improvement. Get your king a bit safer. Which, of course, it's probably seen 10 moves later will, could make a difference. Bishop to b8, another very safe move. Look to d1. And then um, finally take some space. And here, it's very hard for white to move. So Stockfish decides, well, let's, let's give up an exchange to get some yeah, good, good squares or something, which um, Antifish just doesn't take. There's no, no point in it. Knight to e4. King here. And... Um, yeah, now black is having fun. You see all the pieces covering the uh, center and the king side. And okay, Stockfish is not going to blunder. It's not going to let you have some tactic on the king. But this is a lot of pressure on the king side. Um, <laughs> looks very nice now, doesn't it? <laughs> Yeah, try it, try it uh, tonight. <laughs> so we will go a little further here, and then some more maneuvering. It's, I like how calm these computers are. And it's very. Well, what's fascinating is he's backing his pieces up, but still gaining ground forward. You know. Retreat off and into the defeat with Frank Marshall used to say. And so when he's bringing pieces back to put him on better squares, it doesn't give White any play, really. Yes, it's, it's, it's been very careful to cover everything. Now he sort of opens things up, and Stockfish figures the pawns do better here to hold it off. That does come up with a knight. And if you trade, you've lost the blockade on the e4 square. So Stockfish moves the rook over. Again, calmly just to maneuver. Nine, six. Bishop d7. Trying to open up the king side there. Gets a square. So now, clearly, they're, they're evaluating it better for black. Any um, computer and probably any human now would also just like the black side. Wins a pawn here that doesn't matter much. Um, then this side of the board. There are troubles. Um, we'll go a little longer. He's won one exchange back. He's got a strong pawn here. Great knight here. This bishop's defensive, mm. and it uh, has potential attacking possibilities. Queen back to this side, and um, don't let it invade. And these moves I like too. Queen comes back here, and now, okay, 
computer is getting aggressive, moving the king out forward again to cover some squares. And this is actually now just kind of taking over. Can't, these are all defensive, having to guard things, and stockfish is just going back and forth. So, um, blockade. And that rook's come into play on this side. So you can see the beginning of the end here. Trying to make use of this strong D pawn. Bishop to this side. Um, oh, I'm sorry. Uh, I think I I skipped some of these moves. That was um, yes, it attacked the bishop and. Let him have that bishop, but um, check and wins the queen. So um, and soon, soon we're going to stop because it's uh, won all its material back and had this strong pass pawn. Takes the queen, takes the rook, guards your advance past pawn, and um, but then um, and then with this fork on the rook and bishop, I think most humans would resign from the black side. Um, they played 30 more moves or something on to checkmate, but at this point we'll, um, we'll stop. I was just extremely impressed at you know, the alien kind of chess that this uh, anti-fish was playing. So let's move on to humans. Um, and in the busy summer chess season, there is the Croatian chess tour. Or, uh, yes, Grand Chess Tour, Croatia, one of the, um, these four uh, chess tour cycles. And in that tournament are um, many of the top of the world, uh, Carlson, or Wesley So, Napomniachi, Fabiano Caruana, Ding Lirin, Aronian, Anan, Karyakin. So, you know, 10 of the top 15 players. Does that have anything to do with the candidate? Uh, this one. Is it this series or no? Not clear. Okay. Um, Is the Grand Prix a way to get into the candidates? There's the Grand Prix. There's two. Do you get two spots from the Grand Prix? I think two spots from the. Um, what do you call the 128 player knockout? Uh, two spots from raiding, the um, former challenger, Caruana, and then I think one wild card that Fide can do. Um, and in this tournament, uh, for there was a surprise leader after three rounds was Ian Napomniachi, and he's, he's the top rated Russian in the world. He's, he's actually now shot up and he's rated number four in the world. So he was just leading the tournament ahead of everybody, but um, last round he lost to Ding Lorin and he's, uh, he's fallen back to a tie, three-way tie for um, first with Carlson and uh, Wesley So, who's having an excellent tournament. Um, so just sort of like Mike Baer, who's Tied three-way tie for first at this point. Um, 
I, and so a nice, uh, fun, short game is a Carlson game. I, I guess I've shown a lot of them, but he just plays such good chess, it's um, hard not to pay attention to him. And uh, yes, is curious as, if you're curious as to these ratings, Carlson's up there at 2874, you know, near an all-time high, Caruana second, Ding Lurin, uh fourth, and on Wesley So, his comeback, he's, he was doing so well a couple years ago, kind of lost some energy and fell back, but now he's rated number five in the world. Dominguez Perez from, uh, who was Cuban, the Demigrated, is now number 12 in the world. And um, Nakamura, our U.S. champ, has fallen back a bit to 16th, and he lost to Carlson again in this tournament. He just somehow can't play against Carlson. Mm -hmm. uh, but a very fun game was um, Anish Giri, who for about five years in a row was the most solid player in the world. Um, and he used to have a plus score against Carlson. He had white and they played a Sicilian defense. And if you play D4 against Carlson, it's going to be that Shevchenkov Sicilian that he played in the world championship match against Caruana. So, Geary plays bishop to b5. It's a little less theoretical. And Carlson can do, he played g6 in other times, but played e6. So Geary gives him the doubled pawns. And um, then plays for development. Carlson develops his knight here the intention of knight to uh, g6. And Geary anticipates that with h4. So if the knight goes to g6, he just kicks it out. And Carlson just stops that pawn from advancing. And now Geary tries to make use of these black squares and these double pawns to give him a hole on this d6 square. Uh, the usual move is pawn to f6, but Carlson just felt like being a bit different and played pawn to d6, which uh, I have to say does look a little strange. Must have surprised Geary a bit. And okay, he moves the knight out so you can recapture with the bishop. Um, now a suggestion for white from anybody here. Doesn't have to be a good suggestion. Ah, thank you, gentlemen. Yes, you do here or I, I actually do like this square hitting C4 or something. Uh, but exactly what both of you said the old classical morphe, develop your pieces. And yeah, the computer thinks white's a little better after this move. But Geary plays a little funny. He moves the knight that he's already moved. But you, you lose some time in development. Uh, Carlson takes the pawn. Knight attacks it, and Carlson just retreats to e7. Okay, and Gary develops the other knight. That part's good. And then Carlson says, well, who's the biggest troublemaker? He, this bishop's not doing anything. He comes out to a6, so he can trade off this knight when he, he wishes to. And... Geary tries to slow him down, make him defend the pawn on c6, but Carlson just gets rid of the knight anyway. It allows the intermezzo 
queen takes c6 with check. And Carlson can't interpose. He has to move the king. Geary takes it. He's a pawn up. But Carlson saw that that h pawn would be hanging, so he grabs his pawn back. And you say, this looks pretty reasonable. Maybe it is, is quite reasonable for both sides. We are, um, we're now on move 14. Uh, so here, Gary Castles kind of looks reasonable. Um, and Carlson brings his knight back to a nice secure square. And then Geary follows up with the problem he had earlier. He just keeps moving his knights, and he moves the knight to e2. Maybe I had to cover the d4 square. Maybe he should have done bishop e3. But uh, it's funny, he's actually given some tempi to, to the black side. So Carlson drives the queen away, and Geary comes to a4, attacking the pawn. But a very nice way to defend it is rook to c7, because you can also double on the d-line. Uh, who said bishop f4? OK, just like a 2800 player. That's what Gary did. But yes, here, and, and you have to be careful with the, the white side. And now Gary says, OK, I, can, I can't bring a rook there now because you have two on it. So he plays c3 so he can bring a rook to the d line. Looks kind of reasonable. White's castled. Rook can come to the D-line. Pawns are even. Material's even. But this was, in fact, Geary's last mistake, which is very surprising. It looks very normal there. Okay, okay, well, you've got it again. You're, he hits him here, which, okay, sometimes you say don't push the pawns in front of your king, but you've got four of them, and the king also needs a square, an out square. If the bishop comes to e5, you'll just push it off with f6. Um, very good, yes. Gary says, all right, I can counter so I can get a good square for my bishop because I'm attacking your rook. And this is Carlson magic that happens now. Looks just, and it was all the thoughts came from before, but just looks so reasonable for white, but rook takes d1, rook takes d1 on the queen, and... Uh, Shall we, do you want to continue trying to guess Magnus's? Queen A8, a very nice square. Out of the attack from the rook, and the bishop has to move, which it did, okay. I don't know exactly where you go, but Geary's square is about as good. And still kind of looks reasonable for the, uh, the white side. Okay, knight to h4, you could play. That's, it certainly has a big threat. Um, I'd have to go pawn to f3, and maybe you could sacrifice something. Definitely worth considering. Uh, not what Magnus played. h4, and what's your idea? If you could get in h3, the queen, the pawn, the rook, plus the knight, 
it's suddenly this massive attack for, for uh, black that comes, um, comes out of nowhere. And, and Geary looks at this and he thinks, oh my God, how, how am I going to defend? That's, um, he tried pawn to f3 and Magnus continued with pawn to h3. And Geary started to calculate. <laughs> They've now played 23 moves. Um, you, you, you can't move the pawn, the queen takes. You can't take the pawn, the queen takes on f3, and, um, and that would be the end. Um, he, he sat and thought, and he resigned at this point. We could, uh, we could go through a couple of variations, but... Um, you know, there's a, you can you can try to trade the queens to get to some end game, but not only do you take a pawn, but there's going to be a threat of rook to h1 check, so you're losing time. Well, I think there's a number of things you can try. They all look bad, and they they're all worse when you when you start to calculate them. They computer tr was thinking this, but um, it was pawn to g4 now, queen to here, pawn takes. Getting desperate, you can trade the queens with check. But then there's kind of a check, kind of if the king takes, there's a knight fork. So it's just a uh, a miniature by Carlson with the black pieces against one of the most solid people in the world. And unsurprisingly, he's back uh, tied for the lead. So he hasn't lost a game in like 73 games? I think that's correct. <laughs> when he gets near the record, we'll have to keep a count. <laughs> what is the record? Um, they counted a little differently. Uh, Tall had the famous record, something like 101 without... Um, uh, defeats and then Ding Lurin had was about that same amount. Then some people who were playing in Swiss tournaments and such against lower rated players, uh, someone claimed 110, but it's not in the same league. If he gets to 100, we'll, we'll put it up on the board. And I'm going to sure to be sure to cover some of our action from the Tuesday night uh, marathon, because always some good stuff. Um, okay. We've looked um, a lot at the uh, top section, but all the sections have some very entertaining games with some action. So uh, last round, Craig Yamamoto against David Rakinitz was kind of fun. So Craig started e4, and David Rackenitz always plays the French defense. Come rain, shine, earthquakes, or hurricanes, that's his, <laughs> that's his opening. So we had an advanced variation. Queen to b6. Pawn to a3. Okay, we're beginning to get in a little unusual territory. David just stops the advance of the, the queenside pawns. Pretty logical. 
this move from Craig isn't best. Just develop your knights. He plays b3 to hold these squares, but it's a little odd in the, the French to put your pawn there. Okay, the bishop does guard the d4 pawn. And Craig is really going for a, a pawn wedge in the middle. But it, it costs time. And here he gets a little rambunctious. You've made enough pawn moves. One, two, three, four, five, six, sorry, seven. But Craig charges up to take territory on the king side. Little, little too ambitious. Okay, David exchanges on e5 and brings out his knight. Anyone want to guess Craig's next move? H4. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you there. And the, the man is consistent, you know, that's principle. <laughs> okay, it, it takes territory if you could consolidate all that space, that would be great. <laughs> Pardon? <laughs> yes. Now, now, mind you, Tall once did that. He started with eight straight pawn moves, but I think Craig has beaten his record. <laughs> David develops his bishop. Uh, G6. Bishop. Bishop. Um, develops the knight now. And this move I kind of like. Pass along. <coughs> Develop. And actually White's gotten all the pieces out, controlling a lot of things here. But uh, it has been at a cost of, of time, because Black has everything out. So look to B1. Yeah, it's getting... White has a problem of where to put his king. Because <laughs> if, if you castle, you get into a pin on that diagonal. So Craig defends the pawn. Double on the, the file. And, okay, you're, you're just trying to keep everything guarded for White. You're under some pressure. Knight f1, knight g8, not quite sure, but now he decides to drive the, um, drive the rook away. So if he can do that, just push you back, then you can maintain your balance. But this was nice to see from David. He, he's sometimes a little hesitant, but here he seizes his chance and sacrifices the exchange, which um, I think uh, French players would be very happy to do this because you break the center. So you're winning this d4 pawn, and then the e5 pawn will soon come after that with the white king in the center. So Craig. Craig is getting some punishment for all those, those pawn moves. Oh, what are the pieces of stones on the eighth oh. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, something went a little wrong there. Um, in fact, the game goes pretty quickly downhill. Develop, but uh, he takes the E pawn, which was a goner anyway. And instead of capturing, trying to keep it a bit closed, knight comes back so it can capture on uh, g5. Queen to d3. And bishop to f4. 
ready to take those squares. So now Craig captures the knight on e7. And then this was kind of nice. Didn't recapture, but knight to e5. Leaving the rook hanging. And here actually Craig resigned. Yes, actually, is this is it a little premature? D three, and you've got a. Um, here and then. Um, no, just knight takes f3. Yeah, something like here. You can. Well, if, if instead of pushing the pawn, does knight takes f3, queen takes f3, and bishop d2 check, rook takes f3. Oh, okay. Maybe that's cleaner. Yeah. Knight takes check. King takes, queen takes, bishop d2 check, discovered. So you uh, take that. Rook takes f3, and what's, what's the count here? Take back to the knight so he can recapture the rook. Okay. Knight takes, rook takes, knight takes, pawn to uh, d3. Is this going to... At this point, it's a rook and... Yeah, this one's, this one's not so clear. Knight, black bishop. Yes, yes. It's but yeah, it's not it's not that clear. He should have played on, certainly. That's, what about just D three here? Okay, that's <coughs> and a question should we take that rook or save ours? That's uh this if we um take the rook now how much are we down at this point? Oh, but I think you're right. Then if we we take this one here, that certainly looks like a wonderful attack. We're down a whole rook, but um, wow. Yeah, now if we check and um, win the queen, check. Knight takes, rook takes. We've we've opened up the the line for queen to e three check. Yeah, this look. It looks like a really nice attack from from back in it. Um, but yeah, with the queen and pawn, it's going to be going to be awkward. But yes, I, Craig should have played on and uh, given us some of these variations. Um, a nice warm up is from another game. Um, oh, that's.
of uh, David Anderson against Carson Mayer. And to get to the position is only seven moves, so we'll take it from the start. Um, David Anderson with white, Carson Mayer, and a sort of hybrid C3 Sicilian. D4. And D4 kind of mixing things um, other than an interesting pawn sacrifice. But um, Carson's a little afraid to take the pawn. I think I would. I'd be a bit greedy and just grab it. Um, he, though, takes, takes, and develops pinning the knight on f3, so so the d4 pawn is more vulnerable. And Carson's a little afraid of that and hits him with pawn to d5. But um, Carson, uh, David decides, sorry, Carson Mayer decides to put the pressure on the f3 pawn. All right, you don't, you don't get to say anything <laughs> when you go oh no. But uh, thank you for, yes, that is an oh no. <laughs> Anyone? Uh, we, yes, he, he should have taken the knight on e5. You lose your queen. Bishop b5, check. Somebody has to interpose, probably the knight. But then you take it. Only legal move is queen takes. Knight takes d7. And if you count right now, uh, white is up a piece. You could move the bishop, but the knight's not trapped. It, it, can, it can take the other bishop on f8. So no matter what black does, he, um, he loses a piece. Sadly, this didn't happen. <laughs> no, I, I mean, it, actually, actually, that was his big chance. It would have been a glorious win. Um, but too afraid of the pen, he... Uh, He went queen to a4, check, and uh, then he was able to interpose the bishop on d7, and all was okay with black. So you get these opportunities in the Tuesday night marathon. And any queen sacrifice, I'm very happy to show. <laughs> um, It, yes, the way it's transposed looks like it came from a D pawn opening. Yeah. A lot of times the openings do transpose there. Um, uh, but yes, this, this theme of this attack, I, get, I think sometimes you get it from a Chagorin defense, but I've seen it in the Sicilian also. Uh, no, 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 I'm sorry, no, 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 no. Yes. Uh, where both knights come out and the bishop comes pinning in the Nimzovich opening. Yeah. And then there's the bright gambit. What is? I'm not sure what it is. 
He's got an opening named after him? Well, he played, there's some, there's some sacrifice that he found, that was kind of similar mess like that. It's not just the way that he was weeding, but not really changed. It's kind of you, you don't remember it too? I don't remember too. his name, but it was like, it's in the latest two or three, uh, I don't know, Oh, okay, well. Maybe I'll see it tomorrow. Um, okay. Uh, who Elliot is referring to is somebody from Santa Cruz. So I don't think he's an, an I am. Um, okay, I suppose I should let you go now. It's, um, good luck.